is this fairly, you know, easy design. You can spin at different speeds, uh, different mile per hour. It ends up being about three to four miles per hour, about 200 revolutions per minute is a, about the right speed, and you can choose how many strings that you have on the thing. Uh, last year, we this 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 past growing season, we switched to this other design, which has uh, instead of the sickle bar on this uh, this uh, hedger, we uh, replace that with this and a bracket system. And the advantage of it is that we can use the existing equipment, the hedger, but it has more maneuverability than we'd have with the Darwin. So we can go up and down easily, and there's a lot more easy, quick controls to be able to adjust the thing where we want. But uh, So there's that aspect of machinery. The other aspect is, well, what kind of form do you need of the tree to be in in order for this to work properly? Obviously, the, the, the strings are only this long, so that's the very longest that it could go into a canopy. So, if you look at a tree like this, we could get this one fairly well, but anything on the inside is missed with a string thinner. So we end up having some benefit here, but not benefit here. And it gets to be a kind of an odd thing for you, the, the thinning crew is because, you know, they, they tend to want to operate the same, the same way. They have their system, okay, thin about this much, thin about this much, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of fruit in the middle of the tree, like two or three times as much fruit in the inside of the tree. All of a sudden, they have to change their their thoughts on how they thin the fruit. And so, uh, this year, we had to have the crew come back two or three times to redo the inside of the tree because, you know, it, it's just the, the mental change. So this is this is an open center tree, but it's a little bit different design of an open center tree. Quite often with open center trees, you have a kind of a dog leg effect, and that's because uh, to stiffen up this this scaffold, uh, growers will quite often do a heading cut. It shortens it up, causes the, the uh, this to be uh, thicker, able to support more fruit. The system that we used was a debudding technique, similar that you might have heard in uh, cherries. That peaches tend to grow their branches at the ends, real strong growth. But what we did at the beginning of the growing season is uh, cleaned out the buds here when this was the end of the branch. And so we cleaned out about a hand width of buds in the zone right here. As a result, we don't have a dog leg there. The transition between last year's growth and this year's growth, the two years growth is very smooth. So you don't see the dog leg. And as a result, it makes a better arrangement of limbs up and down the scaffolds. So it's a little bit different system. So that's why if you're looking at this open center trees, it might look a little bit different. That's, that's what's going on. So the idea is having a narrow canopy that if you go with the Darwin thinner on both sides, that you'll get the majority of the fruit. And so that's, and we have that same type of concept with the 12 foot spacing here. These are trees in their fifth leaf. We didn't have any crop last year because of the trees. So um, I think we're getting closer to something that can be handled by the Darwin Center. But peaches are kind of unruly. They want to, you know, they'll sometimes throw a strong limb like this, where they, you know, you'd like it to be flat, and it's not flat. So uh, I think that we need to do some actual training back in the nursery, whereby the, the tree is trained to be a palm that tree, so that you don't have this thing starting off from, from the get-go.